Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button because we're about to blow your mind with some breaking space news that NASA just confirmed. You know that feeling when you discover something's been right under your nose the whole time? Well, Earth just got a cosmic companion that's been quietly following us for 60 years, and we're only finding out about it now. Before we dive into this mind-blowing discovery, if you're loving this content and want to support the channel, consider becoming a member, dropping a super thanks, or sending us a super chat during our live streams. Every bit of support helps us bring you the latest space discoveries. Let's get into it. NASA just officially confirmed something that sounds like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie. Earth has a second moon. Well, sort of. Let me explain before your brain explodes. This little cosmic hitchhiker is called 2025 PN7, and it's what scientists call a quasi-moon. Now, I know what you're thinking, quasi? What does that even mean? Stick with me, because this gets fascinating. Imagine you're jogging around a track, and there's someone running on a parallel track right next to you, keeping perfect pace. They're not running with you, but they're definitely running alongside you. That's basically what 2025 PN7 is doing with Earth. It's orbiting the Sun just like we are, but it's staying so close to us that it looks like it's our companion. Now here's where it gets really interesting. This little space rock was spotted by astronomers at the University of Hawaii using the Pan-STARRS Observatory on August 29, 2025. But, and this is the crazy part, when they dug through archival data, they discovered something absolutely mind-blowing. This little space rock has been traveling with us since the 1960s. That's right, folks, during the Beatles, the Apollo missions, the moon landing, disco, the internet revolution, Y2K, smartphones, TikTok. This asteroid has been our silent companion the entire time, and we're just noticing it now. How did we miss it for 60 years? Well, there are a few reasons. First, this thing is tiny. We're talking about an asteroid that's only about 19 to 30 meters wide, roughly the size of a city bus or a small house. In the vastness of space, that's like trying to spot a grain of sand on a football field from the bleachers in the dark. Second, it's incredibly faint. It only becomes visible to our most powerful telescopes when it gets really close to Earth, which doesn't happen very often. The visibility windows are few and far between, as one of the researchers, Carlos de la Fuente Marcos, from Complutense University of Madrid, explained. All right, let's talk about what makes a quasi-moon different from our regular moon, because this is genuinely cool stuff. Our moon, the one we're all familiar with, is gravitationally bound to Earth. It orbits us directly. It's like a dog on a leash, following us wherever we go. But 2025 PN7, this is more like that friend who always happens to be going the same direction as you. It's not orbiting Earth, it's orbiting the Sun, just like we are. It just happens to have an orbit so similar to ours that from our perspective, it looks like it's following us around. Think of it this way, Earth and 2025 PN7 are both on their own separate merry-go-rounds but these merry-go-rounds are rotating at almost the exact same speed and are right next to each other. So even though they're on different rides, they're always side by side. During its closest approach, 2025 PN7 swings within about 186,000 miles of Earth. For perspective, our actual moon is about 238,855 miles away on average. So this quasi-moon actually gets closer to us than our real moon sometimes. But here's the thing. Over time, 2025 PN7 switches between different types of orbits. Sometimes it's in a more circular, Earth-like orbit, staying relatively close. Other times it shifts into what's called a horseshoe orbit, where it can get as far as 185 million miles away from us. So naturally, you're probably wondering, 
how long do we get to keep this cosmic companion? Well, according to NASA, 2025 PN7 will stick around in its current near-Earth orbit until approximately 2083. That's almost 60 more years. If you're watching this video right now, there's a good chance you'll be able to tell your grandkids about the time Earth had two moons. After 2083, the gravitational tug of the sun will gradually pull it back into a horseshoe orbit, and it'll drift away from us. It won't disappear completely. It'll still be out there doing its thing, but it won't be our close companion anymore. It's kind of poetic when you think about it. This little rock has been with us for 60 years in the past, and it'll be with us for another 60 years in the future. It's like a cosmic friendship that's perfectly symmetrical. Now, before you think 2025 PN7 is super unique, let me tell you something that'll blow your mind even more. This isn't Earth's first quasi-moon. We've actually identified at least seven of these cosmic companions over the years. Let me run through the roster real quick. First, we've got 164207 Cardea, also known as 2004 GU9. Then there's 469219,011, discovered in 2016. And here's something cool. China's Taiwan 2 mission, which launched in May, is actually heading to Kama'o'alewa to collect samples and bring them back to Earth in 2027. How awesome is that? We've also got 2006 FV35, 2013 LX28, 2413 339, and 2023 FW13. And now, the newest member of the family, 2025 PN7. But wait, it gets even more interesting. Some scientists believe that at least one of these quasi-moons might actually be a fragment that broke off from our real moon during an ancient impact. Imagine that, a piece of our moon that got knocked off billions of years ago, and now it's wandering around in space, still keeping us company. And speaking of interesting origins, when one quasi-moon called 1991 VG was first discovered, its unusual orbit led to some wild theories that it could be an alien probe. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. But the fact that these objects can spark that kind of imagination just shows you how mysterious and fascinating they are. So where did 2025 PN7 come from? That's the million dollar question, and scientists are still trying to figure it out. Carlos de la Fuente Marcos, one of the lead researchers studying this object, believes it probably came from something called the Arjuna Asteroid Belt. Now, unlike the famous main asteroid belt that sits between Mars and Jupiter, the Arjuna Belt isn't really a distinct belt at all. It's more like a scattered group of small space rocks that happen to have orbits around the sun similar to Earth's. Think of it like this. The main asteroid belt is like an organized neighborhood with streets and houses. The Arjuna belt is more like people scattered around a city who all happen to commute the same route to work. Interestingly, researchers have also proposed that some material ejected during lunar impacts might contribute members to this Arjuna belt. So there's still a possibility, and this is just a theory at this point, that 2025 PN7 could be an ancient piece of our Earth's moon that got blasted off during an impact, wandered around for who knows how long, and is now back hanging out near its home. The composition of 2025 PN7 is still unknown. Scientists need more data to figure out if it's made of the same stuff as our moon, or if it's a rocky asteroid from somewhere else entirely. But based on how its orbit behaves, experts are confident it's a natural object and not some piece of space junk or an old satellite. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, wait, there's an asteroid hanging around near Earth? Should we be worried? The short answer is absolutely not. Even though quasi-moons and mini-moons can closely approach our planet, they don't typically pose any impact risk to Earth. 2025 PN7 is no threat whatsoever. Scientists have calculated its orbit very precisely, and there's no scenario where it's going to collide with us. In fact, these kinds of objects are actually beneficial for us. They're relatively easy to reach with unmanned missions, which means they can be used to test planetary exploration technologies without having to travel super far into space. 
They're like practice targets for future space missions. That's exactly what China is doing with its Taiwan 2 mission to Kama Ohalewa. By studying these nearby objects, we can learn more about the composition of asteroids, refine our spacecraft navigation systems, and maybe even figure out how to extract resources from space rocks in the future. So not only is 2025 PN7 not dangerous, it's actually an opportunity. You know what I love most about discoveries like this? It's a reminder that even in our own cosmic backyard, there are still secrets waiting to be uncovered. We live in an age where we can detect exoplanets thousands of light years away, where we've sent rovers to Mars, where we've captured images of black holes, and where we're planning to send humans back to the moon. And yet, right here in Earth's neighborhood, there was a small asteroid that had been traveling with us for 60 years that we only just noticed. It makes you wonder, what else is out there that we haven't discovered yet? How many other quasi-moons might be lurking in the darkness, too small or too faint for our telescopes to spot? What other cosmic companions might Earth have that we don't know about? As Carlos de la Fuente Marcos said, the solar system is full of surprises, so we keep looking. And the fact that 2025 PN7 exists and is the smallest known quasi-moon suggests that there may not be a lower limit to the size of these objects. There could be dozens, maybe even hundreds of tiny asteroids out there, all following Earth-like orbits, all just waiting to be discovered. This discovery also tells us something important about the nature of observation itself. Sometimes the most interesting things aren't hiding in the distant cosmos. They're right next to us, just waiting for the right moment, the right telescope, and the right set of eyes to notice them. So what happens now? Well, astronomers around the world are going to keep studying 2025 PN7 whenever visibility windows open up. They'll try to determine its exact composition, refine their calculations about its orbit, and maybe even figure out its true origin story. Who knows? Maybe in a few years, we'll send a mission to visit it, just like China is doing with Kamalawea. Imagine getting close-up photos of this little space rock that's been our silent companion for so long. Imagine landing on it, collecting samples, and bringing them back to Earth to study in laboratories. And for the next 60 years, every time you look up at the night sky, you can know that somewhere up there, even if you can't see it, Earth has a second moon keeping pace with us on our journey around the sun. It's not bound to us. It's not captured by our gravity. It's just there, a fellow traveler in the cosmic ocean, a reminder that we're not as alone as we might think. And that, space explorers, is the incredible story of 2025 PN7, Earth's new quasi-moon that's been hiding in plain sight for six decades. What do you think about this discovery? Do you think we should send a mission to study it up close? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single one, and I love hearing your thoughts. If you enjoyed this deep dive into NASA's latest confirmation, do me a huge favor. Smash that like button. It really helps the algorithm show this video to more space enthusiasts like you. And if you want to support this channel and help us bring you more cutting-edge space content, there are several ways you can do that. Join as a member. You'll get exclusive badges, custom emojis, early access to videos, and members-only community posts where we discuss space news together. Send a super thanks. That little heart button below the video lets you send a one-time tip that directly supports the channel and shows up as a highlighted comment. Drop a super chat during our live streams. We do live coverage of major space events, and super chats help your message stand out while supporting the channel. Every bit of support, whether it's a like, a comment, a share, or a membership, helps us continue bringing you the universe's most amazing stories. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss out when we drop new videos about the cosmos. Until next time, keep looking up, keep asking questions, and remember, the universe is full of surprises. We just have to keep looking. This is Azim signing off. See you in the next one.